what's up, Nickel guys? It's your host, the Night Wrencher. I'm actually on the way to the track right now. Uh, I've got a very particular uh, encounter with another YouTuber. His name is Nil Bolts Left Behind. He has a 1970 Challenger. Uh, it used to be a base model, but now it seems to be a, uh, a pseudo RT car. It does have a 5.7 Hemi swap. Not only that, it has a TR6060 six speed transmission. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it is a manual transmission. So he went from an automatic to a manual, and then he went from, I believe it was a 318 to a 5.7 Hemi. So he's got uh, some pretty good upgrades going under the hood. Aside from that, he went ahead and installed, I believe it was a true track in the back, and he also installed a set of traction bars so he can be have better grip. The story with my charger was that it was basically my charger that I've owned for 20 plus years and it was sitting out in the field for God knows how long. So I've actually spent the last week basically only sleeping about three hours every night trying to just finish everything up for this track day. I've been pushing this track day along probably for the last month and a half because I thought the charger would be ready and then something else would come up. And then I would think the charger would be ready again and the, something else would come up. So eventually I said, you know what, as soon as I'm ready, I'll let you know. So a week ago I said, hey, by this weekend I'll be tuning the car and by next Thursday I should be ready to rock. So he's like, all right, we'll set it up and then we set up today. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I actually didn't get any tuning done until last night. It was probably like nine or 10 o'clock in, in the evening when I actually got a little bit of tuning done after which I had to load the car up on the trailer. And then from the trailer, now I went to work, and then from work, I have to go straight to the track. I'm pretty excited for this race. The No Bolts Left Behind Challenger is actually a really nice car. It was really well built. A lot of intention was put behind every single little thing. And, and the owners actually got way more seat time than I do. I basically only have one evening of seat time on the Challenger. Uh, I did put a new set of wheels and tires. They were not mine. I took them from... Uh, of my own 1970 Challenger, it, it's essentially a parts car at this point because uh, we're getting all the paint done, bodywork done on it, and it's still not done. That's also getting a Hemi swap, which is originally how I found No Bolts Left Behind in the first place. But the thing about the Charger is that it's a Mopar 361 big block, which was the second smallest big block produced, the smallest being the 350. So the 361 is a 5.9 liter Mopar big block. So the upgrades that I've had for the 361 so far have been long tube headers, an Edelbrock RPM uh, dual plane intake manifold, a Holley 750 vacuum secondary carburetor. I don't know the gearing of the rear end, but I do know that it is a sure grip axle, which means it is a posi traction type axle, which means that it spins both tires whenever you go to launch. The transmission behind the 361 is actually a 727 automatic, which is a three-speed automatic, very similar to a TH350 or Turbo 400 transmission. That has actually been rebuilt before, and when it was rebuilt, it also got a shift kit installed. What I failed to do when I got that transmission rebuilt is that I did not pick up a high-stall torque converter. I was expecting to just push around the car and I ended up picking up a stock replacement torque converter and I feel like that's going to hurt me quite a bit. Another problem is that it won't fully engage manual first. And then the last problem that I'm gonna have with this car is actually the factory camshaft. So I pretty much know exactly how this race is gonna go down but let's hope that it goes in our favor and if not we always have round two i have a couple more goodies in store i have a cam ready to go for this motor so all we can really do right now is hope for the best and then prepare for a better plan of attack for round two Ready?
right, so it's the next day, and as you guys can see, I didn't do very well at all. We did about four or five runs, pretty much back to back, and each one uh, ended up about exactly the same. I've got my two best runs here, and what I mean by that is on the eighth mile on this one, I, I did a 10.35, and on this one right here, I did a 10.50. But if you look at the mile per hour, I have a 70.8 on this one and a 71.40 on the other one. So on the slower time, I had a higher mile per hour, and I think that was my very first run of the night. And on the one that says 10.350, I ran half a mile per hour slower. If we look at the reaction times, the RT, I've got a 0.4, and I've pretty much had 0.4 through the entire night. On some runs, I actually made it to 0.2, but the mile per hour and the eighth mile times were actually slower, so that didn't really help me at all. The reaction time on his was actually really spot on. This one, he happened to have a really fast reaction time. Other times, it was like a 0.1, but this one, a 0.028, was actually super, super fast, so he did a really good run. This was not his fastest run, but it was a pretty quick run. They were all roughly about the same speed. If we're looking at the 330, we've got a 6.8. 8.4 versus a 7.0 versus a 5.7 which is really nice and then finally we're looking at a 10.35 versus an 8.64 and then his mile per hour was 84 miles per hour versus my 71 and 70 miles an hour looks like we didn't do too hot and it looks like we're gonna have to step up our game a little bit so i'm gonna go ahead and see you guys all in the next one night wrencher out